Hello, and welcome to another episode of Unstuff America. I'm your host, Andrew Mellon, and I am here with our producer and friend, Maya D. Haynes. And today, we're going to be talking about urgent versus important, which is one of the primary distinctions that I'm often talking about when I am teaching time management, productivity, and organization out in the world. So the way that I like to explain it to people is really when urgent and important are in sync, when the house is literally on fire, it's, there is no distinction between urgent and important. So you don't have to worry about telling them apart. It's when the house isn't literally on fire that it's essential to know what is important or urgent will always trump it. Urgent is loud, shiny, flashy, busy, distracting, and it will always steal focus because it's big and loud. Ur important is quiet. It's not, it's not less significant. Don't, th don't, mis don't misthink or uh, confuse the quiet and steadiness of important for lack of significance or power in your life. It's just a constant, it's a baseline that is under everything else. So when you know what's important and this other stuff is going on around you, it's much easier to remember, right? Busy, and this is what's important. I'm gonna stay focused here. It's when that baseline is missing that it's very easy to, ch it's that shiny, you know, squirrel. It's the chasing after the shiny, bright objects that you see anywhere. And of course, Artists are not, this is not their only problem, and this is not only a problem for artists, but artists are notorious for this when I am teaching in artist communities, and they are busy gathering new materials to make new work when they have a supply room and a studio full of materials that they've already brought in thinking this is the source of my next project right but now this new thing is a thing that must come home with me and they get into that trap sometimes of just accumulating supplies and never actually making the art right we mm -hmm. don't want to do that in our own lives as as artists of our own lives, even if you don't consider yourself to be creative, you don't want to be bringing shit home to your house thinking, oh, this is the thing that's going to fix our time management problem. This is the thing that's going to make us less disorganized at home. And you're at the container store, no dig to the container store, they're a public <laughs> store, but you don't need to be shopping there for things if you don't know what you're looking for. That's the point that I'm making. So whether it's the container store or any other big box store or you're shopping online thinking, ah, this is the device, this is the tool that is going to cure my disorganization at home. It's not if you don't know what the problem is. So, and I think that we were talking before, Maya, about, mm -hmm. you know, the current political situation and everything seems so urgent. Every, I mean, it's very easy if you're already a news junkie and you're interested in staying up on what's going on, that the headlines change every hour and every beyond hour. the kinds of horrible global things that happen like Charlottesville or what happened in Barcelona and elsewhere in Spain this weekend, there are real urgencies and importancies that are happening in the world, but there's so many things that make the news cycle that really in 10 minutes, in three days, we are not going to remember them. And it's an, it's an easy way to keep the news cycle flowing with fresh content from the producer's point of view. Mm. But for us as consumers, it's, it's just easy to get lost and we have to remember to stay focused on what matters. So what does matter? You know, what are the big issues that are in front of us? Healthcare, tax reform, climate change, overly aggressive policing, you know, a lack of harmony in our communities between the police and the communities. Those are the big issues that we need to be tackling. Racism, sexism, all of those all of those big ticket items that we want to have time to focus on. And they're not things that we're going to make snap decisions about. We all have our positions. We all have our feelings about them. Right. But it's, it's careful consideration. It's being able to look at something, even if certainty and clarity is on your side, that your point of view is the dominant point of view and almost everybody will agree with it, we still need enough time to be able to tease it out so everybody can get on board with it or almost everybody, right? I mean, we do live in a, we live in a representative democracy. We live in a republic. It's majority rules. It's, there's going to be times that the minority is not going to love what the majority all says. No, this is what we want to have happen. 
So for that to, for us to get the greatest buy-in possible, we need enough time for it's. So when we look at what just happened with the health, yeah. healthcare, you know, the, the repeal and replace uh, mm-hmm. movement inside the Republican Congress, doing things behind closed doors, not involving everybody, and then it crashed and burned. So clearly being able to spread stuff out, poke at it, pull on it, tease it, dig into it, test it, see what makes sense, what has legs, what is a bunch of garbage that somebody's trying to weave into something that doesn't belong in that, in that garment. Right. And we can't do that if we are constantly trying to put out these false fires. So what advice on a micro level, right, where you're doing a lot of these trainings and you have people in the room sometimes managers, sometimes administrative assistants. So bringing it to the micro level and, you know, you're an admin and you have news alerts coming into your phone all the time because you want to stay on top of things. So the Washington right. Post and, and, you know, Wall Street Journal, probably your best friends. You get more alerts from them than you do anyone. Right. You are in a situation where you're putting out a lot of fires or what you consider to be fires. You have your list of this is what I have to get done in a day, right? Right. And then you have your boss, or in some case, multiple people you may be reporting to, or you may be going to for certain things. And they're like, I need this right now, or I need this, or I need this, or I need this. So how do you get people to distinguish then? I, you know, I have a list of what's important to me versus the people who are paying me and responsible for me having a position here, have a list of things that they want me to get to. So how, how would you advise somebody to distinguish, but to, What's the, what's, what should they do? And yeah, great question. And what yeah. I would say is that th- we'll take it down one more level even, right? Yeah. So we've got the macro that we were just talking about, then the macro micro, which is really the culture of where you're working. Yep. And then there's the micro of your own, your self-contained world of you have autonomy to have toast for breakfast or frosted flakes, you have autonomy to wear high heels to work or flats, right? I mean, flats. so, right. <laughs> <laughs> so on the lowest level of microness, you want to be crystal clear about what's important to you. On that macro, micro level, it feels like it's, it's a cultural challenge, just like it is on the macro, macro level. And so... When everybody is in that bubble of, this is important to me, I don't know what's important to anybody else, you work for me, so you now are a source of me alleviating my own confusion and pressure, I'm going to just delegate something to you without, without any consideration or proper management of how to support you in getting all the things done that need to be done. Right. So in those cases where we always go or where I try to always go is into the culture itself and say, so nobody's in a vacuum. Mm-hmm. Every, we need to be clear about how we're communicating to each other, how we're interrupting each other. And that's a whole other episode of yeah. South America that we'll talk about interruptions and distractions and how pervasive they are and how powerfully they derail even the best of our abilities to stay focused and on task. But we'll set that aside for later. We'll just raise it as an issue to know that interruptions and distractions are part of that, are part of that urgent versus dis- mm-hmm. urgent versus important thing because your boss is important or urgent becomes possibly your urgent or important. Or if you don't remember what's important and then you can't say to your boss, hey, cool, time out. Got it. This just came up. Now, if it came up from his boss or her boss, I get it. But if it's just like a, a new idea, then it's, it should be easy to lay it out in the room and say, just five minutes. So mm-hmm. yesterday, these were all the things that were important that we're working on. Tell me, is this more important than any of those things? Help me to prioritize because you can't do that in a vacuum. You can't read anybody else's mind. So just because the, the somebody in a position to delegate to you gives you information and says, this is important. There's no context for how important is it? So then we need to tease that out. Is it a number one? Is it a number three? Is it a number nine of the 10 things or the 14 things that I'm already looking at? Where should I slot this in? Right? Right. 
and so then if we look at it at, we're at home as well. That was going to be my next question. Right. <laughs> Relationships, so, if you've got littles, how does that Exactly. Work? If at home, you know, nobody, nobody has dinner if nobody's making dinner, right? If you're, if you're running around and you're in urgency, we forget what's important, which is mm -hmm. to have dinner on the table for you, for anybody that you live with, whether you live alone or you live with a family, right? Nobody wears clean clothes if nobody's doing the laundry. Nobody gets to school on time if you can't find your car keys or your kids can't find their homework. So on, again, on that micro level, being able to distinguish what's urgent versus what's important. Maybe watching television or being on social media or playing a video game is, seems important, but is really just an urgent kind of impulse thing mm. happening. And then the question is, would it be better to get off the TV 15 minutes early and go place your homework by the front door? Make sure your car keys are hung up on the hook inside the front door. Make sure that everybody's lunch is packed. Make sure that the laundry is out of the dryer and folded and ready for you to do something with, even if you don't put it away that evening, that at least it's not just sitting in the dryer for another day, possibly damp, possibly not damp, waiting for something to be done to it. It's about being smart at that micro level and remembering so the functioning of the household is important to all of us. What, again, whether it's one person, whether it's you and your cat or your dog or you and your family, what does it take for this to be functional? Mm -hmm. That's what's important. Then what makes our life more pleasurable? We can fold in on top of that. So what do you say to people who say, well, it's incredibly important that I'm on Facebook because I need to decompress for the next 25 to 30 minutes or I'm going to lose my mind or I'm going to scream at my kid if I don't, if I just don't. Because I think that part of social media and part of being lost in the news and things like you're able to disconnect for at least a little bit. Sure. You think you're connecting, right? But you're right. able That's to. That's another conversation too. Right, right. <laughs> so what do you say, you know, and it could be a tour, like what are the lies we tell ourselves, right? Or it could exactly. be a story that we're telling ourselves. So how do you get people to move past that? If they're, well, you know, Andrew, it's really, I just came in the door. It's important that I sit down and I have, you know, some chamomile tea and see, you know, what Kim Kardashian is doing this week. Sure. Or, so what I would, so, what, yeah, right. So what I would say to any of that is, I, I would not take away decompression time from you. What I would say is look at all of the different options that are available to you for decompression. Mm. Because you might be just choosing one that's easy or mm. familiar, habitual, without really bringing any mindfulness or clarity to the choice that you're making. If you want to move something forward, is there another way to decompress that also keeps you focused and engaged in something that matters to you? Because let's be clear that um, I get, I mean, I do it as well. I get the idea of I need to completely disconnect. I'm an introvert. I just came mm -hmm. back from a conference. After two days of talking to a lot of people about what they do, more people than I'm comfortable talking about what I do. Right. I would like to talk to no one for a period of time. <laughs> yes. Now, in doing that, I could be on social media. I could be reading a book. I could be watching television. I could be meditating. I could be taking a walk. I could be bathing. You know, I could be like sitting in a tub, soaking in some water. I could be drinking tea. I could be snacking. I could, eating, I could be eating a bag of potato chips. There's any number of ways that I can, I can do something that doesn't require a tremendous amount of thinking or engagement, but still means that I'm present for this was an intense moment. I want it to be less intense. How do I get it to be less intense? Right. And then I have a, I have a menu of choices, but by default, I might just say chips and dip and TV. Right? <laughs> I mean, certainly like, again, going way back in my childhood, when my folks split up, I spent a summer baking cakes. That was how I decompress. And I, I, ballooned up you know and everybody was like oh andrew's filling out <laughs> yeah i had crossed filling out i had gone from being in the whatever the slim section to the husky section of sears like that was the journey <laughs> one summer, right and i had always been really thin so that was that was you know that was a 12 year old's ability to uh, trying to cope with family drama was bake and eat bake and eat bake and eat now had somebody said hey 
let's go ride bikes, let's play ball, let's go fly a kite, let's go swimming, let's do something. But by myself, that was the, that was the way that I found some comfort and without anybody interfering or intervening or offering any suggestions, right? I mean... So that was what was most important to you in that time was satiating yourself with with Duncan Hines. Well, I mean, sugar was like, sugar. I mean, you know, sugar is certainly, it's a, you know, it's a great uh, mood alterer before mm -hmm. drugs and alcohol. Anybody can get to some sugar. So I think that, that <laughs> you know, sugar and fat, it's sort yeah. of hard to argue with uh, how satisfying it is to eat, even if it's not good for you. But uh, the, the point is that um, it became a habit. It wasn't like I thought, I, I wasn't deliberately thinking, hmm, of all the things I could do today, what should I do? And because I was in the vacuum of myself and I didn't, I have no siblings, my dad was off at work, my mom was absent, that was the best I could come up with. Farmer Jack's was literally around the corner. I could get to the grocery store in five minutes. I could, you know, for $2.39, I could buy a box of Betty Crocker or Duncan Hines and bring it home. Yeah. And I was self-contained, right? I mean, some eggs, some milk, some oil, and you're done, right? And then you just have to wait 30 minutes. <laughs> <laughs> vegetable oil, always vegetable oil. Exactly. <laughs> so again, my point is, it became easy without thinking to do that. We all have the ability to list towards easy. One of the beautiful things about mindfulness, about awareness, which again, isn't about necessarily sitting on a cushion and meditating, but it's just about bringing some awareness to it is, so I could do anything. What else is available, right? I mean, I had a 12 year old's mind and tool mm -hmm. set I don't, I, I'm, I'm a little older today. I have more tools available to me. For anybody who's listening to this, what are the tools that are available to you? You can, you can go to Facebook because it's habitual, but is it really the best choice? And if, if just like reading email but not answering it because you don't have the time to answer it can get you upset by what you've read, perhaps Facebook or, or Twitter or social media is not the best place to go if, if you're going there seeking quiet and calm, but in fact, you're just going to get pissed off and, and irritated, right? And then you're firing stuff off and you're posting stuff and you're like, God damn it, rah, 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 <laughs> you know, and all of that is going on. So maybe it wasn't the best choice, but it just was the easiest choice. And you, again, if you're feeling it all disconnected, you could be thinking, well, my people are there. So I'm going to go connect with my tribe, even though it's all virtual. Right. So and it's, I mean, it's all about what it's sounding to me or what it sounds like to me is that it's what is you're prioritizing, whether consciously or subconsciously, what's important. You're making Facebook important. Yes. It's not, it's, there's no sense. The urgency that you're putting there is what, is what you're, throwing onto it, right? Which is a story, right? Which I mean, is a story. That it's, it, it might be one of the 200 lies and it is a story that you're just, you're making it more important than it might be or it might need to be. And I'm not, I don't have a judgment about either of those things. It's what's important is what's important to each of us. Knowing our core values, that's why it's so essential because in those moments when mm -hmm. nothing else makes sense, when it might feel like yelling and screaming and carrying on is the only option, you get to decide, is that the best choice for me in this moment? Sometimes right. it might be, and again, I'm not gonna take that away from anybody, but maybe there's another choice that could be made that keeps you organized, keeps your life simple, because again, it's also part of that idea of we're trying to simplify our lives, right? Right. The, the fewer directions we're running, the more likely it is we get to be where we want to be. We have a home environment and a work environment that supports us, that nurtures us, that feeds our spirit, that keeps us engaged and, and uh, energized and not enervated and tired. And, uh, and we feel connected to the people that we love. We're available to show up for the people we love, to show up for ourselves. Mm -hmm. it, that's self-care. So it's, it feels like it's all of those things that we want to be smart about our choices instead of just saying, ah, oh, screw it. Uh, I'll, 
I'll be smart tomorrow, right? I'm just too tired today because that's also where clutter comes from. That's walking in the front door and just dropping your coat on the kitchen table and leaving your keys someplace. And I don't even even put that in air quotes, but you just <laughs> leave them someplace, but not in their home. And then you can't find them or your mobile phone is on silent and it's in the pocket of your coat and you just drop your coat and then you walk away and you're like, fuck, where's my phone? I, I can't find my phone. Some, somebody call my phone, but your phone's not vibrating. So <laughs> here's the phone. And it's, you know, it's just, it, it's, I feel like there's always a pivot point. You can go left into complicated. You can go right into simple. And, I mean, and, you know, not drawing like left or right. There's nothing attached to either of those, right? Yeah, we're the just talking is, directions. Exactly. Yeah. We're just talking directions. <laughs> it, it just, you could go this direction into something that's going to complicate your life and make there's going to be one more thing you're going to need to undo yep. to get back to simple and neutral. Or you can go over here and there's one more thing you can strip away that's going to get you closer to neutral and simple. And if simple is where you want to be so that everything is possible, you have to be thinking in the short term and the long term implications of the choice that you're making, not just in this moment, I really want that BLT, but in the big picture, I don't want to be in my fat jeans anymore. Yeah. I mean, and it's also just simple. It sounds like going back to what's important is what you're talking about. If nobody does laundry and nobody has clothes, you need clothes to be able to go to work. It's connecting those small dots of, that aren't so small. If you don't know where exactly. your kids are, you can't leave home. You can't go make money. You can't afford the home. Exactly. Right. And those 15 minutes, right? I mean, that's the, that's the, that's the lie is five minutes here, 10 minutes there. I'm going to make up that time. You're not going to make it up. Yeah. No so, time machines that we know for yet. Uh, yeah, no, not yet. I'm going to encourage everybody. You can certainly go to unstuffyou.com. You can go to andrewmellon.com and you can download for free a series of core value exercises. Absolutely free. They're also in my book, Unstuff Your Life. You can also find them online. You can Google core value. You don't have to do mine. Just do some core value exercises. It's a great exercise to do by yourself. It's an amazingly powerful exercise to do with anybody that you live with. If you've ever wondered why the Tupperware lids don't end up with the bottoms or why somebody keeps putting the knives in with the uh, serving utensils, it, these kinds of exercises will clarify why people are making the choices that they're making. And suddenly, the, any of that stuff discordance that might be happening in your home or your office will get crystal clear because now you'll understand, oh, you're, you're not doing it to be a dick. You're not doing it to piss me off. You're doing it. <laughs> because this is what's important to you and this is how you this is how you manifest the importance in your life and i i it just it lands on me wrong but it has nothing to do with me you're just doing you're living your values and we're not living our family values right we don't know what those are we have a vague idea of them but we don't have them clear so teams at work families at home a tremendous opportunity to learn more about each other, get closer together, be more connected, be more on the same page, and actually, and discover where those weird anomalies are. It's, a, it's just, it's, it's the best 25 minutes you're going to spend at home with the people you love. So. <laughs> it's worth it. It's totally. worth it. So with that, I think we're going to wrap up this episode. Thanks for joining us for another episode of Unstuff America. Come back here. Be sure to rate and review us every time you are, every time you're listening to us, that you're sharing this with your friends and family, uh, your colleagues, anybody, please encourage them. The ratings and the reviews are so essential for a new podcast that we get, we get that kind of support because if we want to get to new and noteworthy, if we want some visibility, we, we need your help to do it. So that's, that's the end of the plug. I, I hate asking for help, but I'm asking <laughs> for your help. Please, I, please. I'd also say to find us on social media, we're on all the platforms. Um, and we want to also hear what you want to hear on yes. Unstuff America. So we want to hear from you. Go to andrewmellon.com, uh, find us on Facebook, Instagram, just let us know. What do you want to hear that we're not talking about? Yeah, excellent. Okay. Thanks so much. Thanks, Maya, for another great episode. Thank we'll you. We'll see you all back here very soon. Bye, everybody. Bye.